Revelation chapter 18 verse 20 and it reads rejoice over her thou heaven and ye holy apostles and prophets for the most high Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai have avenged you on her and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus, with violence, shall the great city, Babylon, be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And this is what is coming for Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, eh? modern-day Bosra, modern-day Mount Seir, that's right. These are all named for Babylon the Great. And the Lord says again, And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone. We've already seen the destruction of America. That's right. America can never be healed. This is the capital of Esau Edom. The self-proclaimed white man. That's right. This is the nation that made all the earth drunk. This is the nation that have destroyed the entire world, have turned the entire world into a wilderness. And the Lord Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai is about to judge her. In the spirit world, it's already happened because the prophet, all the prophets and the apostles, they saw, including John, our forefather John the Revelator. He saw America on fire. Jeremiah, Isaiah, they all saw it. Habakkuk, they all saw it. But it's just about to play out. And before we get into this monologue from our friend, George Galloway, like he always does, family, the entire world know who the cancer of the earth is. And, and we're going to allow him to speak. But before we do that, let's give honor and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh. Our heavenly father, the creator of the heaven and the earth. And he blessed us with his only begotten son, the root and offspring of King David, the bright and morning star, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, whom we are patiently waiting for. That's right. We, he is the one that's going to bring peace upon the earth. One of his name, and eh, no, his title is Shiloh. You know what Shiloh means? That's right. It means peace. He is the one bringing peace. No other nation can bring peace upon the earth because this earth here was given into the hand of the wicked. So if someone, if someone whom the Lord, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, have created to be the wicked, do you think you can change that person? That's the question. Do you think you, a mere mortal man, do you think you can change that person? The answer is no. So Esau is going all out. And family, that is why we are here. Hmm? Always giving thanks and glory to the power. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, for giving us this faith, giving us this knowledge, this wisdom, this true treasure to see who, eh? who is who. Because the whole earth is in gross darkness. The cause of the, with the, the, the problem in the world here was brought on by who? Esau Edom, self-proclaimed white man. He is the wicked. Malachi 1.4. Hey? And we're going to allow this gentleman to speak. But again, honor, glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Yahweh, our heavenly father, and our king, the redeemer of Israel, Yahweh Shai. Let's give double honors to our head apostles from the great millstone that taught us this truth. That's right. And always shall salutation, peace, salutation, peace to all the brothers out there, the, my fellow laborers, constantly laboring, eh? the, 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 the spiritual army of Yahweh Shai, eh? feeding the sheep. Eh? This is the food that we need. We don't need anything else. This is what we need. This is what keeps us going. That's right. This is what keeps us going. All praises, honor, and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And again, salutation, peace to all the brothers out there doing this work in sincerity and in truth. And I pray that the Lord will continue to bless you, continue to increase you as we are patiently waiting for the second coming of our King, 
Yahawasha and to you the hopeful elect, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, African American, Native American, the speckled bird spread, spread among all this nation. I say shalom. Shalom simply means what? Peace to you. Man, I hope this message find you in absolutely perfect peace. Man, let's get in. Let's go. Your seatbelts, it's going to be a bumpy night here on the mother of all talk shows. Sorry, let's go. Let's go here. I don't know what happened here. Indelibly etched amongst the bloodshed. It was said to be a Putin talking point, a trope. Some of us got Russian agent stamps on our profiles on Twitter for pointing it out. Manila Chan, my former colleague on RT America, is just one. The reality is, it's now confirmed by none other than Zelensky's own right-hand man, the man who was in charge of the negotiations in Turkey. The a deal, a much more advantageous deal than could be dreamt of today was on the table from Russia. Essentially, all it meant was the recognition of the Minsk agreements that everyone signed up for back in the day and an ironclad, copper-bottomed pledge that Ukraine would never join NATO. For that, all these hundreds or thousands of Ukrainians' lives could have been saved. All the hundreds of billions of dollars. Russian dollars, yes. Ukrainian dollars, not so many. Your government's taxpayer dollars, an almost unlimited amount, could have been saved. All that blood and treasure was expended because, presumably, under orders from uh, genocide Joe Biden, Boris Johnson went to Kiev and told Zelensky not to sign the deal. But we fight on, well, they're not fighting on now. In Advika, a huge number of Ukrainian soldiers have just this evening surrendered to the Russian armed forces that now completely surround them, opening up the whole of the front to an advance from Russia, which need not stop, as Colonel McGregor just put it this evening, until they reach the Polish border. Although I have no doubt they have no intention of doing that, but there will be nothing to stop them from doing it. We fight on, said Boris Johnson, ready to fight to the last drop of somebody else's blood. In this case, a very large number of Ukrainian poor bloody infantry whose lives have been sacrificed by a satrap, albeit a bloated one, with a fine sense of himself, as Winston Churchill, in fact, he's not fit to polish Winston Churchill's boots. Boris Johnson carrying out the orders of genocide, senile, demented Joe Biden has ensured that this terrible conflict has dragged on and on. Though not for much longer, if I am any judge. And I judged correctly on the last show on Wednesday that it would be unconscionable, impossible, for Netanyahu to resume his crazed, unhinged, genocidal assault on the largest prison camp in the world, as our Foreign Secretary David Cameron called it back when he was the Prime Minister of Great Britain, speaking in Turkey in 2011. He said that it was the world's largest prison camp and it must not remain so. If that was true in 2011, all these years, more than a decade later, it's even more true. The depredations of living in such an open air prison camp have been considerable, even before the assault that will live forever in infamy was launched by Netanyahu on October the 8th. There's something about its quantity, to be sure. 20,000 dead in 50 days is 
a very considerable casualty rate. If you scale up the population, the Gazan population is 2.3 million. 20,000 dead out of 2.3 million. Do the math. Think of what that would mean in your own country. The scale of it is something to be sure. But the quality of it, if I can use that word, is what will write it in blood into the history books. The slaughter of more than 10,000, nearer to 13,000 women and children amongst that number of 20,000 is what renders it completely unforgivable and completely unforgettable. And if this cap wears it, if this cap fits, wear it. If you are among those who supported this genocide, if you supported this Herod-like massacre of the infants, if you refused to demand a cessation to this mass murder, then you deserve to be damned for eternity on the judgment day, a judgment that will be made not by me, but by the Almighty. But I am in a position to say that if you are one of those who supported this, who refused to oppose it, who remained silent about it, who walked by on the other side of the road as the children lay dying, you are damned in this life forever. Your actions or your inaction will hang around your neck like a lead weight, like uh, the proverbial albatross around the neck of the mariner forevermore for the rest of your days. No one will ever allow you to show your face, to make a comment, to condemn anyone for anything without reminding you and everyone who will listen to them that you are complicit in one of the most horrific crimes in modern history. That's how bad it was. But I said on Wednesday that the rising tide of nausea across the whole world now finding mouths out of which to be evinced like the Belgian Prime Minister like the Spanish Prime Minister, like the Pope, who said this is not war, this is terrorism. Like the leader of the United Nations, hundreds of whose employees have been slaughtered by a member state of the United Nations. But not yet the British government. Even more damning, not yet by the British so-called opposition. Keir Starmer is still refusing to call for a ceasefire, a cessation of this slaughter. Not yet from the European Union that daily, daily was on its feet denouncing Russia over Ukraine for crimes not one hundredth of the crimes they have been silent about over this last 50 or so days in the genocide in Gaza. Not one word can be divined from von der Leyen, from Borrell, from the European Parliament. None of them have even now found voice but the public are voting with their feet and you know the knowledge that one is to be hanged in the morning concentrates the mind wonderfully and Joe Biden is to be hanged less than 12 months from now. More than 80% of his own voting base demands an end to the slaughter. The American people are out on the streets in every major city in unprecedented numbers, in London, 
in unprecedented numbers everywhere in the world in unprecedented numbers there will be no glad confident morning for Zionist propagandists again they will never again be permitted to take their high ground and lecture the rest of us on what racism means on what genocide means Genocide meant the Holocaust in the 1930s and 40s by fascists in Europe against millions, tens of millions, six millions of them Jewish people, ruthlessly annihilated with the intent of total extermination. That's a Holocaust. But it's also a Holocaust. What's happening in Gaza? The attempt to extirpate, annihilate, remove from the face of the earth a genus, a type of people in total. Not just bad ones, not just kind of middling ones, leaving only the good ones, no. The intent is now clear to render Gaza so uninhabitable and to kill as many particularly childbearing women and particularly children who will never now grow up to make the territory so uninhabitable that the people are forced to accede to their demand that they should remove themselves from the face of the earth or be exterminated. Exactly the tactics of the perpetrators of the Holocaust in Europe of the 1930s and 40s. There's no getting away from that. There's no getting away from the comparison between Netanyahu and his gang in power increasingly precariously and those who committed the Holocaust. And yet, the former doctor of this very show, the mother of all talk shows, was arrested by the police in London yesterday and held for 24 hours for making a comparison which is as plain as a pike staff, which is obvious to anyone Gaza is the Warsaw Ghetto. The people raising it to the ground and everyone in it are the fascists. No one with eyes to see is in any doubt about that. But Dr. Ranjit Pra was arrested by the police over something in a book, on a bookstall. Would that you could get such attention to detail such diligence from the Metropolitan Police when you're the victim of an actual crime, when you're knocked to the ground, when your house is broken into, when your car is tanned or stolen, when, you're, when an old lady gets knocked down in the street, would that the police had the time and numbers available that they have to walk down Whitehall, going through people's books, on their bookstalls. They even arrested two ladies for having placards written in Arabic. It has become a crime. Arabic has become a crime in England. Two ladies were arrested for holding a placard up. The cops asked them, what does that say? Like that's the big issue in Britain today. But they were told what it said. But because they had no translator, they arrested the two ladies. This farce is, of course, the legacy of Cruella de Vil, our erstwhile Home Secretary, 
continued by James, not so cleverly, sacked from the Foreign Office, shuffled to the Home Office, but no change of orders there. The British government is making a fool of itself and a fool of us because they are doing all of this, flying almost hourly from our military base in Cyprus, which we used to run as a colony, every single hour from our base in Cyprus to Tel Aviv in giant military helicopters, the contents of which even members of parliament are not being told their questions refused by implicating ourselves, the Americans, by implicating themselves, the European Union, by implicating itself in a crime that will live as long as the Warsaw Ghetto itself, that will live as long as the memory of the Holocaust itself by willfully implicating ourselves in this crime. We have made the entire world hate us. And half of our own populations hate their own government with a vitriol which is frankly dangerous. It's dangerous to our health. It's dangerous to the health of our democracy. Fast being shredded in front of our eyes. Now, of course, the devil finds work for idle hands. So, as they've been stopped, although not entirely stopped, as uh, the brave Alex Crawford of Sky News has been the best witness, they're still murdering people in Gaza. But at least the bombing has stopped. Or rather, it has moved. They are killing, I think it's 25 people in the last two days in the West Bank, where there's no Hamas, where President Abbas, the friend, is the ruler. They're murdering people, dozens in two days in the West Bank settlers and soldiers are burning and looting and trying to stampede the population to what Geert Wilders who won the Netherlands election this week as I was the first to reveal in the show on Wednesday he's quite frank Jordan is Palestine, said Wilders. There is no Palestine. Ergo, there are no Palestinians and they must be driven into Jordan with incalculable consequences for that desert kingdom. And they're bombing Lebanon. And they're even now bombing Syria. This evening, they bombed the international airport in Damascus. Can you imagine if Syria bombed the international airport in Israel? Well, that's what happened today. And you needed me to tell you that. Because not one single Western media outlet will tell you that, has ever told you that. It's never glad, confident morning again for the Netanyahu gang in Israel. The question is, will it ever be for those of us in the Western countries dripping in blood who have facilitated him? Fasten your seatbelts. Malachi 1.4 Whereas Edom, self-proclaimed white men, says we are impoverished but we will return and build the desolate places this is what happened in the 1400 after 
the fall of Roman Empire. They were put in chains for a thousand years. They came back in the 1400. But we will return and build the desolate places. That's when they came back into power and gave you Caesarea Borgia as, as, a, as a sweet baby Jesus. Hmm? There says the Lord Yahweh of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. You hear that? And they shall call them the border of wickedness. Eh? Goes back to what? Edom, right? The border of wickedness. And the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. Eh? That's right. Esau, he himself proclaimed, why man? He is the one. Let me read. Let me read it. The border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord Yahweh have indignation forever. And before we get into the main, let's go to Job 9.24. I know I've brought it up many times, but this is the time that what? we are revealing who Esau Edom, telling the entire world who the Lord is coming to judge. And he is the top, top gangster. That's right. And he's the one the Lord is really not showing no mercy. And America is run by the same devil. And Esau Edom, the self-proclaimed wife. Hear what the Lord says about him. Job 9.24. Listen to this very carefully. In case you wonder why there's no peace on this earth here, there will never be peace because this earth was given into who? Let's go. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. You hear that? The hand of the wicked. What did the Lord says? Who is the border of wickedness? Esau, Edom. He says, was given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. Who, when they came back into power in the 1400th, what did, they, what did they do? It's called iconoclasm. Mm, Google that. They started changing the images. Eh? That's why right. during the, what is it called? The Byzantine Empire. Who was ruling? That's right. It was us ruling. They call it the Dark Ages. Eh? The moment they came back into power in the 1400, they changed all the images. Started putting themselves as what? Well. The Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shai. Apostle Paul told you in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, all the way down, he tells you. He put himself as the Most High, the Son of the Most High. We will get that. He said, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges. The judges start with what? Yahweh, Yahweh, Shai, and then the Israelite. Hey? Therefore, if not, where and who is he? Who, who has been running the world for the past, oh, let's say five, six hundred years? Esau, Edom. The beginning of their kingdom started with who? Alexander the Great. And then what? And then it went into what? The Greco-Roman Empire. They lost power for a bit. They came back in the Renaissance, starting with what? The Spanish, the French, the British. Out of the British came America. That's right. The same devil. Hmm? But this gentleman here, George Galloway, like I said, always to me, I think he's an Israelite. That's right. Only, only we have the type of past family. The spirit says what? The spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are the most high. The sons of the most high, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shai. You see? Only, only, only the elect are going to be sighing and crying about this, this, this man here. Esau, he himself proclaimed white man. He is the cancer of the world. But we're going to get right into it. We're not going to waste time at all. At all. Family, was it Ezekiel? No, 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 no. Habakkuk chapter 2. We're going to read through it. Eh? We're going to read through it. We're going to read the NLT. And fam, this is going to be just short. It's going to be quick, straight to the point. Everybody knows who the cancer of the world is. It's Esau Edom. Hmm? He is the border of wickedness. And that, like I always say this, thank the Lord that he gave us this truth through the spirit and power of our King Yahweh Shai. Because we know. Because like I said, if you plant an apple, you're going to get an apple. Or if you plant an apple tree, you're going to get an apple. And you're not going to get orange. Esau is the wicked. So what? You're going to expect nothing but wickedness. You're going to expect people to tell you that what? It's okay to have sex with animals. Okay, it's okay. That's right. You're going to have, yeah, that's right. In America, that's right. You can have sex. Bestiality, certain states, it's okay. They're going to tell you that a man, a man, a man, family, a man can have menstrual cycle. A man can have a baby. That's right. I think this week they were celebrating what? Trans, trans, trans Women's Day. Listen to that. Trans Women's Day. You think I'm making it up? Let me see. Uh, is it trans women? I saw that somewhere. Is it trans? Trans Women's Day. Let me, I, saw, I saw it somewhere. International Women's Day. No, that's not it. I saw it somewhere. No, family. I can't remember where I saw it. 
No, it's not. Uh, trans women. No, I saw it. I saw it somewhere. But anyhow, you know, it, that, that's, that's when you know the wicked is in rulership. He's telling you that no, we don't need women anymore to bring uh, to bring uh, uh, more, to to bring forth children. No, we are creating our own artificial womb, and then we and then you wonder why the Lord is coming bringing fire to destroy this place here. The Lord is justified. Not that the Lord needs my opinion, but no, the Lord is justified bringing destruction upon this earth. Let's go to the book of Habakkuk, chapter two. It says, "Look at the proud." Eh? We're going to read through it. Look at the proud. Who is the proud? Esau, he themselves proclaimed white men. They trust in themselves and their lives are crooked, but the righteous will live by their faithfulness to the most. That's right. The, the, the just shall what? live by faith. Verse 2. No, 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 no. What was that? How did I start from verse 4? Family, my apologies. Let's start from verse 1. It says, I will climb up to my watch water. Sorry, my watch tower. My watch, watch, <laughs> my apologies. Please forgive me. I misspoke there. It says here, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1. I will climb up to my watchtower mm -hmm, and stand at my guard post. There I will wait to see what the Lord Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh says, and how he will answer my complaint. The Lord's second reply to Habakkuk. Then the Lord Yahweh said to me, Write my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. That's right. That's what we are doing right now. We're telling you what the king is of Yahweh through his only begotten son, Yahweh, which I am about to do on, on this planet here. Family, we are living in the last days of the last days. Think about it. Game seven. Hey, you talking about the game is tied. Three, three. Game seven. Three, three. Okay. This is it. This is it. And we are in the fourth quarter. Okay, fourth quarter, the game is closed, man. The game is closed. And we only have 20 seconds on the clock. That's it. That's it. And what? One, the team, one team is up by one. This is how close we are. Eh? This is how close we are. The end is here. And let's read on. That's how excited we are. Because we are waiting for what? Two main, two main prophecies right now. The microchip. And, and then the third world war and we are heading there it's that time is fast approaching because what is happening in the so-called so, so middle east which is what west asia family is not middle east it's west asia and eh? it's going to lead to a third world war the certain things have to play out first the microchip has to be in, in, introduced they have to collapse the financial system is going to collapse and then they're going to bring the microchip and then the lord is going to show up Oh, yeah, in the midst of that third world war. That is what we are waiting for. He said, then the Lord said to me, write my, my answer plainly on tablets, which is what? The Bible, so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. Let's read on. Verse 3. This vision is for a future time. I read, this is the time now. Eh? It described the end. The end of who? Esau's kingdom. And it will be fulfilled. Remember the Lord says what? The word that goes out of my mouth will not return to him void. That's right. It shall accomplish every detail. Hmm? He says here, if it seems slow in coming, hey, wait patiently. It feels a while. He says, though it tarry, don't do what? Wait for it. Therefore, it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. You hear that? It will not be delayed. Oh, family, like I say, you can bet your house on the word of the Lord. It will come to pass. It says here, look at the proud, which is what Esau Edom. Hmm? They trust in themselves and their lives are crooked. That's right. Openly, openly, because what they have the power, they can do it. Openly destroying nation, family, they will come into your country. And they will set up their military bases. And guess what? The moment that goes up, you know that you are in trouble. Because why? Because whatever they tell you, you have to do it. Or they're going to cause all type of chaos in your community. They're going to what? Destable your, 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 your government. They can create coup. Eh? Then, then what? You are busy fighting each other. And then there goes your resources. And then when you broke, they send you to their bodies at IMF, International Monetary Fund. That's right. And they're going to give you loans that you can never pay back. That's right. That's Esau Edom. That is his game plan. Hmm? But here, it says, look at the proud. They trust in themselves. Their lives are crooked. But the righteous will live by their faithfulness to the most high. That's right. Oh, at the end, come on. Hey, 
they're not going to win. The wicked is going to be thrown down. You see, they're not going to win. Esau, Edom, family, he is mark for destruction. That's the time that is coming. It says wealth. Listen to this. Wealth is treacherous and the arrogant are never at rest. Hmm? They can never have enough. They are going from countries to country to country to country with their military bases. They are openly stealing oil and resources from Syria. Openly. Because why? They have the power. It's in, the, it's in their hands. It says here, wealth is treacherous and the arrogant are never at rest. And they open their mouth as wide as the grave. And like death, they are never satisfied. In their greed, they have gathered up many nations. You hear that? In their greed, they have gathered up many nations. Esau is in bed with all type of nations. And he's today, listen, I want to trade with you. Let's make trade agreement. It doesn't matter. As long as you are in bed, it doesn't matter what you are doing to your people. As long as you agree to go by his rules, you are good. You can be the biggest terrorist. But as long as you are doing what they are asking you, they're going to turn a blind eye. That's Esau Edom. When Saddam Hussein was in bed with them, what did they do? They supplied Saddam Hussein with what? Chemical weapons and they went after Iran. Family, this is, this, this is, this, this is, all these news are out there. Just do a, do a little research. And then when Saddam later decided that, listen, man, I don't want to play ball with you anymore. I want to dump the U.S. dollar. What did they do? They make up all type of stories. Including what? Weapons of mass destruction. Sent what? Colin power before the U.N. Holding a vial up in the air saying that, oh, look at this, look at this. Uh, Saddam Hussein have weapons of mass destruction. The next thing you know, Iraq is being leveled. That's how they operate. That's how these devils operate. And the only one that's going to put them down is the same one that gave them the power. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. The Lord, he's the one that ruleth in the kingdom of men. Jo uh, what is it called? Like Daniel 4, 17. So the Lord set him up and the Lord is going to remove him. But this time with violence. Because Esau only knows violence. You can't sit down and talk to him. No, 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 no. He knows violence. So the, the Yahweh Shai and Michael, Michael the archangel, he's all about killing and defending the children of Israel. So he's coming directly. He's going to be behind Yahweh Shai. And then Yahweh Shai is going to show up with his father's chariot. That's right. The so-called UFOs, those are the chariots of Israel. It doesn't matter whether you believe us or not. And, and then they're going to open up the ass whooping on Esau Edom. That's what is coming. But we're telling you before it happened. So our power, Yahweh, but Hashem, Yahweh, shall we get all the glory. He says, it says here, where was I? I think I missed here. It says they open their mouth mm, as wide as the grave. Eh? And like death, they are never satisfied. In their greed, they have gathered up many nations and swallowed many people. That's right. That's right. You see, they give you some of these loans, family. You can never pay for it. They said you have to buy American dollars to trade with other nations. What sense does that make? I have a different currency. But in order for me to trade with my neighbor from, uh, from I'm, I'm in Jamaica, I have to buy stuff from Barbados. I have to buy the U.S. dollar. Hey, what sense does that make? That's how they set you up. Because if you, if, if you, if you, you, if you come against their plan, guess what? They're going to find something eh, about you. The next thing you know, did they have what? Sanctions. They sanction you. Eh? When they sanction you, they're not sanctioning the government. Guess what? The government, they're all well to do. But they what? It affects the people. That's what they do. This is their record. Eh? It says here, but soon, listen to this, listen to this. But soon, verse 6, it says, but soon their captives eh? will turn them. Eh? And these are the nation, the rest of the nation. They will mock them saying, what sorrow? Listen to it. What sorrow awaits you thieves? Now you will get what you deserve. You've become rich by extortion. But how much longer can this go on? Because they know. Listen, remember the joy of the hypocrite is only for a moment. He's not going to carry on like this forever. This is the end of his kingdom. That's why he's coming down with great wrath. America, as you know it, it is over. America will never rise again. There's no, Trump, Trump is not coming back to make America great again. It is over. Hey? It says, suddenly, your debtors will take action. They will turn on you and 
Take all you have while you stand trembling and helpless. This one's coming for you because you have plundered. Listen to this. This is Esau Edom, a.k.a. Babylon the Great America. That's right. Because whatever America says, guess what? The whole Western world. That's right. NATO, EU, Canada, Australia. You name them. Family, they follow whatever America says. Eh? They are the ones that have been pillaging, raping all nations. Eh? Especially the continent of Africa and eh? South America. Just to make what? The Western world rich. Hmm? And then they turn around and tell you that Africa is a shithole. Because you devils have turned Africa into a shithole. If you leave their resources there, they're not going to be traveling, trying to cross the Mediterranean Sea. Majority of the time, they don't make it across. Look at Libya. Who destroyed Libya? That's right. Who destroyed Libya? The same devil. He says, because you have plundered many nations, now all the survivors will plunder you. You committed murder throughout the countryside and filled the towns with violence. What sorrow awaits you who build houses with money gained dishonestly? That's what happens. This devil, that's what they do. All the richest, they didn't earn it. Pillage, openly stealing oil because why? Nobody stands up for these nations, these small nations. Because why? America has the military industrial complex. They have over 850 army bases around the world. But guess who the Lord is raising up right now? The kings of the east. The Medes. That's right. Russia. Russia is coming to the defense of all these nations. Because why? That's biblical prophecy. Ezekiel 38 is going to be fulfilled spectacularly. And we're going to lift up the name of our power. The power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. He says here, what sorrow? Him? This is what is coming for Esau, Edom. What sorrow are with you? Who build big houses with money gained dishonestly? Yes, listen to this. It says, you believe your wealth will buy security. Putting your family's nest beyond the reach of danger. But by the murders you committed, you have shamed your, your name and forfeited your lives. You hear that? Forfeited your life. Let's look at... Uh, uh, let's go. Let's go back. That's okay. That's okay. It says here, but by the murders you committed, you have shamed your name and forfeited your life. The very stones, eh, the very stones in the walls cry out against you, and the beams in the ceiling echo their complaint. Because the money that you've used to buy all these resources to build your house, guess what? That's right. It is blood money. Eh? So you're never going to have peace. That's what is coming for Esau Edom. That is why Obadiah 1.18, they are the only nation the Lord is not going to have mercy on. Self-proclaimed white man. He says here, what sorrow awaits you? Who built cities with money gained through murder and corruption? Hmm, you hear that? Murder and corruption. They don't care. They can come to your country. Because majority of these uh, so-called politicians in some of these third world countries, they are corrupt. So when you come there and you start giving them bribe, you show them that I met or the almighty dollar compared to their currency. Guess what they do? They will take the dollar. They will sell their own grandmother for that mighty dollar. That's what happens. That's what happens across the entire continent of Africa and, and majority of this uh, South, South Central America and the, and the Caribbean. Because what? Bribery everywhere. You see, but all is coming to an end. Family, that's why we're praying day in and day out that the Lord will cut the time short. You see, he says here, for as the waters, he said, no, 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 he says here, has the Lord of heaven's armies promised, has not, sorry, has not the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh of heaven's armies promised that the wealth of nations will turn to ashes? That's right. He says, your silver is not going to save you. Your gold is not going to save you. Your cryptocurrency is going to save you on the day of the Lord. Actually, let me bring it quickly. Let's go to the book of Zephaniah. Zephaniah 18, 1, 18, I believe. Straight to the point. And Zephaniah 1, verse 18. Well, let's hear what the Lord says about your gold. What did the Lord say about your gold? He says here, neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the 
fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. What did the king say? Let's go to the book of Revelation, Revelation 18. Let's hear what the our king, Yahawashai, says. How long is Yahawashai is going to take to level Babylon the Great? Revelation 18. Is this from the 9? Because he said it three times. Let's go to 9 first. Let me see if I can find it. Hmm. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Is it 8? Oh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Revelation 18. Was it 9? Oh, let me see. Family, please bear with me. Ah, uh, yes, verse 10. Let's just go to with this. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come from the east to the west coast, from the north to the south coast. That's how long it's going to take Yahweh Shai, the angels, and Michael to level Babylon the great. Now let's get back into it. Family, I hope you are getting something out of this. He says here, For as the waters fill, no, I didn't, let's, let's go to verse 12 again. What sorrow awaits you who build cities with money gain through murder and corruption? Has not the Lord, Yahweh of heaven's armies, promised that the world of nations will turn to ashes? That's right. Your gold is not going to save you. I just gave you just one precept from Zephaniah 1.18. It says here, they work so hard, but all in vain. That's right. For as the waters fill the sea, the earth will be filled with an awareness of the glory of the Lord. Family, that is what is coming. For Esau, Edom, everything that he has worked hard for is going to vanish because they think that what? They're going to be hiding in their bunkers. Let's go to the game, the book of Revelation quickly because in their mind, they think they're going to be building bunkers. I tell you, if you are on the soil of America, let me repeat this again. And then you are out there thinking about building a bug out place, a bunker. Hmm. Those are not going to save you. Okay? Because we, as the mouthpiece of the Lord, we have to tell you what is coming. Because this is an order. Before I go there, let's go to the book of uh, Jeremiah 28. Hmm. Jeremiah 28 verse 8. Please bear with me. And then we're going to go back. Excuse me. And then we're going to go back to Revelation 6. Je uh, what is it called? Uh, what did I say? Oh, yes. Jeremiah 28. Jeremiah. <sighs> Jeremiah 28, verse 8. It says here. Hmm? It says here. Jeremiah 28, verse 8. Straight to the point. The prophets. Listen to this. The prophets that have been before me. And before thee of old. Prophesied both against many countries. Here against many countries. Isn't America a country? Isn't America a kingdom? I mean, great countries and against great kingdom. Of what? We're telling you what is coming of what? Of war and of evil. What are the e What is the evil the Lord is bringing? Civil war, destruction, famine. Eh? That's right. And of pestilences, diseases. We are telling you before it happens. So we are telling you again that don't try to invest in bug out locations. Hmm. The land of America is finished. It is done. And we have to tell you of it. Because that is why the Lord put us here to do. It's that simple. But here, let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 6. Quickly. And because in their mind, they think that the holes that they are digging is going to save them. It's not going to save you. After you have destroyed other nations, now you are afraid? Hey? Just openly dropping bombs on hospitals, on schools, doing all type of wickedness. And then you're going to go and hide in your bunkers during the Third World War. Oh, no, no, no. The Lord already got reservation for you. Hmm. It says here, hmm, verse 15, Revelation 6, 15. It says, and the kings of the earth. Hmm. These are your rulers. Yes, King Charles also going to have a bunker. All oh, these elite, they all have bunkers all prepared for them. It says, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and, and they are every born man. Because these rich folks, guess what? They are not going to get up and make that coffee for themselves. Oh, no, 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 no. They're going to take all their servants in the bunkers with them. And because remember, they are rich. And so listen, they are entitled. So they're going to take all the servants in the, in the bunkers with them. And 
He says here, and every born man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. That's right. Those are their bunkers. Okay. What happened? And he said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the land. Because you know, in the bunkers family, these people, they are so rich. They have swimming pool in the bunkers. They have big screen TV. They have theaters. Hey, so guess what? The Lord is going to allow them to see him on their big screen. That's right. They're going to see the Lord Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, with the angels. Hmm? The why they are there hiding in their bunkers. Because family, when we come down in our angelic body, hey, we're going to be digging all of them out. And their first job is to be going around the world, burying all the dead bodies that Michael, Yahweh Shai, sorry, Yahweh Shai and Michael and the angels have laid on the ground. That's right. He says here, and he and said to me, Revelation 6 verse 60. Please bear with me. Whew. One second. Revelation chapter 6 verse 16. And said to, to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him. Hey, who is that him? Yahweh Shai. That sat on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Hey, he says, for the great day of his wrath is come. And who? shall be able to stand? That's a good question. The only ones are his elect. That's right. So all the wickedness that Esau is doing right now, he thinks he's going to get away with it. No, 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 no. No, No. the Lord is allowing him to just build up, just build up the wickedness. Oh yeah, his, his, his sin is, is piled up to the heavens. The Lord is about to judge him. And all this elite, Thinking all the resources in Gaza, they're going to be taking it. Oh, no, 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 no. The king is coming. Yahweh is coming. They're going to, he's going to level that place. And then these same devils that are destroying the place, they're going to build it back better. All the elite, they're going to be carrying the stone. Oh, yes. Family, hardcore slavery is coming. Again, for the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? The only the elect. All these nations, every single one of them are going into captivity. All praises, honor, glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukwa Kudashal, one beloved.